TYT Sports talking boxing with our guy Robert Exel, the editor in chief of boxing.com. Robert, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. We have a good fight on Saturday in the middleweight division. Sergio Maravilla Martinez, 48 2 and 2, 27 knockouts, uh, 37 years old. Uh, Matthew Macklin in the other corner, 29 years old, 5 foot 10, um, hails from. England. However, he his parents were from uh, Ireland, and of course, this fight takes place on St. Patrick's Day in Madison Square Garden at the theater in Madison Square Garden. Um, how much of a how much of a hostile territory do you think Sergio Martinez is going into, and how much of the crowd do you think will be in favor of Matthew Macklin? Well, I think he is going into a hostile territory. Um... The Irish contingent in New York is going to be out in full, uh, rooting Macklin on. But Sergio was used to that. He fought most of his career in Spain. So it's not as though he's not used to fighting you know, on enemy turf, exactly. Um, Macklin will have the crowd behind him, but I think Sergio's got the weight of experience and the WBC diamond belt behind him, uh, as well as uh, the skills to, uh, I think, really put some hurt on Matt Macklin. The last time Sergio Martinez fought in his home country was 2002. So he said that being in hostile territory does not bother him at all. Of course, he's coming off great wins against Sergei Zinzurich, the stunning knockout against Paul Williams, uh, Kelly Pavlik, Darren Barker. However, Matthew Macklin has said that he sees some flaws in Sergio Martinez's game, says that he will let fatigue set in, won't let him catch his breath at all in the ring. Do you see any of those sorts of flaws in Martinez's game? Well, no. I, we know how we know how Macklin fights. I mean, he's a come-forward fighter. Uh, he's going to be full steam ahead from the opening bell. Uh, and whatever flaws he may see now uh, before the opening bell, I think after five or six rounds, he's not going to be able to see it all because all he's going to be able to uh, he's always going to be able to see is Sergio dancing, moving, not in front of him. I mean. Sergio, uh, Sergio has a game plan, and I think he also has the boxing intelligence to fight more than one way. And he's a very unconventional fighter. Whereas Macklin can only fight one way. I mean, he's a come-forward, kamikaze type of fighter, um, and he's going to give it his all. But uh, I have real doubts as to whether his all is going to be enough to, uh, to beat Amaravia. Interesting little nugget. Matthew Macklin, his first, his first fight, not professional, when he was 11 years old, was a win on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, he may have gotten this fight, in essence, through, although it is technically a loss, many people saw it, including Sergio Martinez, as a win against Felix Sturm when he went into Sturm's backyard, who was from Leverkusen. The fight was in Germany, and he lost 116-110 on two of the three judges' scorecards. So with that performance, that basically got him this fight with Martinez. Do you agree with that? Well, it certainly drew um, the world's attention to Matt Macklin, and it also drew uh, Lou DiBella from DiBella Entertainment's mm -hmm. and, uh, attention. And DiBella um, promotes Sergio Martinez, and he's a savvy boxing guy. Uh, I think he sees uh, in Macklin somebody who's going to put up a good fight. There's no quit whatsoever in Macklin, and, um, and, and in a way, I think he's just, uh, he's just the perfect opponent for Martinez. Uh, again, he's going to put on a hell of a good show, but he's not going to put on a good enough show to defeat uh, Sergio. However, he has, said, and he has said that he sees holes. Some of those other holes are that he sees Martinez slowly declining with age. He sees that the middle rounds are a, struggle, are a struggle for Sergio Martinez and that he leaves himself open. Do you agree with any of those? Uh, no, well, that might be so. He does slow down in the middle rounds, but I don't think it's the middle rounds that uh, Macklin needs to worry about. It's the championship rounds that Macklin has to worry about. He's the one who runs out of steam. I recently watched a fight where he got KO'd by Jamie Moore. It was several years ago, but I mean, he just he comes out, uh, you know, full steam ahead. All barrels are churning, um, and he doesn't seem to be able to pace himself. 
Now, uh, again, he has a different trainer in his corner. Maybe his trainer will be able to sort of get him to sort of slow down, pace himself a little bit, fight a little more methodically. But that is really not Matthew Macklin's style. I mean, Matthew, Matt Macklin's style is to be in your face, on your chest, firing away punches. Um, and he's not a slick boxer. I mean, he's a brawler to the manner born. And... Um, and, and again, I mean, it'll be a good contest for Sergio. It'll be a good test of Sergio. We'll see what he has left. But I think he's still got a lot left because even at 37, he's a young 27. He didn't begin boxing until he was 20. So uh, I think Sergio's got enough um, to really sort of put some hurdle Macklin and, and KO him. You know, Robert, a lot of these tall fighters, like uh, the likes of Kelly Pavlik, Paul Williams have seemed to have struggled against Sergio Martinez and Martinez has used his ring generalship and his boxing abilities and just being quicker to the punch against these taller guys. Macklin is five foot ten. Is that somewhat of an advantage not being taller for Macklin in this fight? Oh, perhaps. Um, but again, I mean, Macklin doesn't necessarily fight like a tall man. Macklin, uh, Paul Williams fought like a tall, fights like a tall man. Um, but Macklin does not, and even Williams doesn't fight as tall as he as he is. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be that much of an advantage. I mean, because he he only fights one way. I mean, he's a come forward. He's a brawler. He's you know. He's face first. Um, I mean, again, Sergio's going to be hard. He's going to be, he's going to be a tough guy to find in that ring, no matter what the size of the ring. Sergio is going to be using every inch of it. And he's clever, and he's smart, and he's so unconventional. I mean, I don't know how you ever get a sparring partner who would try to emulate the style of Sergio Martinez, because he is really unique in that way, being self-trained, being unconventional, not, not, not sort of employing the standard, you know, boxing vernacular um, with his body. I mean, he really is his own man, and I think um, by the end of the fight, um, Macklin's going to be uh, Sergio's man as well. Let me ask you this then. Is Macklin a legitimate contender in not just the middleweight division, but a contender that could possibly beat Sergio Martinez? I think any fighter can beat any other fighter on any given night. Uh, nothing, nothing is written in stone. I mean, boxing. I mean, we have a bad night and uh, we make a mistake on the microphone, or I, or I make a typo uh, in writing an article. A fighter has a bad night; he ends up unconscious on the canvas. Um, so anybody could have a bad night, including Sergio Martinez. But. Darren Barker, uh, whatever his limitations, was an ex is really an exemplary boxer. I mean, wonderful boxing skills, hand held high, good defense, uh, uses the jab not as a range fighter, but as an actual punch, as a weapon. Uh, everybody underestimated Darren Barker, and Darren Barker extended Sergio. I don't think Macklin has those kinds of skills. Um, he may be tougher, you know, grittier fighter, but I don't think he's got the kind of skills to really uh, compete with uh, Sergio and perhaps not even compete with him at the level at which um, Darren Barker competed with him. Is there a proper way, I mean obviously we have not seen it in the last few fights that Sergio has had, however is there a proper way to attack Sergio Martinez? I guess uh, the way is probably going to be what Macklin tries to do, which is try to sort of bowl him into the ropes uh, and keep firing punches. Try to corner him, get him into the corners, keep firing punches. I mean, uh, not to let Sergio uh, move, not to let him keep circling around his opponent and firing off shots at odd angles. The only thing he's going to be able to do is really to slow Sergio down. And slowing Sergio down is not going to be easy, but that's really what Macklin's job is going to be if he hopes to win the fight. So he's going to bring the fight to him, and he's going to try to fight on the inside. Is that what you're saying? What else can he do? He can't fight on the outside. The outside game, he'll lose. And, um, and I don't think an outside game is really uh, Macklin's game anyway. I mean, he really has to sort of try to slow Martinez down. That would mean shots to the body, try to get take his legs from him. Um, but again, Martinez is an elusive target. Uh, he's always on the move. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Macklin has his hands full. Just a few more questions for you, Robert. Um, in interesting fashion, I guess you could say, uh, Sergio Martinez actually predicted a knockout, which is somewhat uncharacteristic for him. He said it would not go past 10 rounds. Do you agree with that? Do you think it'll come before that? What's your take? 
I do agree, and I do think it'll come before that as well. As I say, I don't think I don't think uh, Macklin is going to extend uh, Sergio the distance on this one and sort of pocket a decision. It seems highly unlikely. I really think Macklin is really custom made for Sergio Martinez. I mean, it's just the kind of fighter that Sergio can take advantage of with his speed, with his cleverness, with his sort of his his Mercury like presence. Um, I, I think I think Macklin is there for the taking. What do you mean by that custom made? Could you elaborate on that? Custom made. I mean that if one were in a laboratory and sort of you know creating fighters from scratch, and one wanted to create an opponent for Sergio Martinez, one would want an opponent who doesn't have exemplary boxing skills, uh, tends to just barrel forward, uh, doesn't fight going backwards very well, um, not the quickest fighter on earth, um, not great power, and uh, somewhat questionable chin. I mean, who could ask for anything more than that? Let me ask you this, and this will be my final question. How come there are no sanctioning bodies involved in this fight? Well, because Martinez uh, had his belt basically removed from his waist. Uh, he was and is the lineal middleweight champion, but because he fought, uh, he, because he didn't fight a mandatory and chose to fight uh, somebody other than a mandatory, he was basically stripped of his belt, which was in turn given to Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., and Martinez was awarded a quote-unquote diamond belt, which is sort of like a lifetime achievement award from the, from the academy. I mean, it's great to have, you know, it makes a great book stop or doorstop, uh, bookend, but it's not really the belt that he won fair and square in the ring. Are you going to be going to this fight this weekend? I am. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Well, we are too. Uh, Robert Axel, we'll talk to you next week. Uh, enjoy the fight, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, great, Rick. Talk to you soon.